What's up everyone, welcome back. Today we're playing Yarok the Desecrated in Historic Brawl. Yarok is a 5 mana Sultai Commander Elemental Horror 3-5 with Death Touch and Life Link. If a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So sort of like Panharmonicon, um, but it doesn't exclusively um, depend on the permanent entering the battlefield, right? So of course it does work that way. Like. If you have something that enters the battlefield, like uh, Golgari Find Broker here, when Golgari Find Broker enters the battlefield, return target permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. That would trigger uh, trigger twice, right? So you'd get two of that effect. So Yarok does work with enter the battlefield triggers, and a lot of our deck is ETBs, right? But it also works with other permanents that say, like, whenever a creature enters the battlefield, put a plus one, plus one counter on this creature, right? So it works on static abilities like that. So if a creature enters the battlefield, it triggers that ability twice. Um, and I, I know we have a creature like that in here. I just can't remember which one. But something to keep in mind when you're building Yarok is it's not just enter the battlefield triggers. It's also static abilities because it says if a permanent entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control. So that permanent could either be the permanent entering the battlefield or a permanent that's already on the battlefield. Um, just wanted to point that out because it's a little bit of a, you know, word soup there. But um, that makes this commander extra cool, right? Um, so, like, uh, Tatiova is a good example. Landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life and draw a card. Well, that's not an ETB, right? That's a static ability that, that happens when you play a land. So, Yarok doubles that, even though it's not an ETB right it says whenever a land enters the battlefield not whenever tatiova enters the battlefield but it still works with yarok so the whole deck is essentially doubling up cool effects like this golgari uh fine broker all that kind of stuff uro right um gain three life draw card we get to double that up all that kind of stuff uh lotus cobra we get two mana instead of one mana gala greeters we get two of the effect instead of one of the effect pelt collector here's the example i was thinking of Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collectors, put a plus one, plus one counter on Pelt Collectors. So we get this ability twice if it triggers, right? Witching Well, um, ETB, we get to Scry 4. I mean, one mana Scry 4 is pretty pretty nuts. Um, so that's the whole deck. Um, I built this version of the deck to be... Um, I didn't build it to be like super competitive in Historic Brawl in the sense that I didn't like fill it with a bunch of removal and all that kind of stuff. I mean, those things are in there, but it's not, um, it's, the, you know, it's mostly things that synergize with Yarok, right? Um, it's not trying to be extra sweaty to try to get extra wins. So um, I've done that in past videos and we find out whether or not that's a good way to build the deck. Sometimes you have to build the decks to be a little bit more sweaty in order to get them to win. Uh, we'll find out with Yarok. Um, thankfully with Yarok, at least, even if Yarok's not down, a lot of our creatures, you know, they gain us value whether or not he's down. So like Boreal Grazer, right? When it enters the battlefield, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. I mean, even just doing that once is good, right? Doing it twice is obviously great, uh, but doing it once is still good. So hopefully our... You know, ETBs and static abilities have enough value to get us to Yarok where we, we don't need to pack this deck full of removal and board wipes and things like that to get it to win. Um, and, and like I said, that's kind of how I built the deck. Um, as far as mana base, um, it's it's what you would expect. You know, all the applicable fetches, uh, Zagoth Triome, which is the best, you know, fetchable Triome to go get. Um, all the uh, dual lands that enter the battlefield untapped. And, uh, you know, Besaju, Castle Lockwain, Castle Vantress, um, typical stuff. One thing I will mention, though, is I've seen builds of this deck with um, the gain one life lands. The, they're like dual lands that gain you one life. Or the scry lands, they're dual lands that, that scry one when they enter the battlefield. And those do trigger Yarok. So maybe in Commander you want to play those, but they're too slow in Historic Brawl. Um, the, the main difference between decks that win and lose in Historic Brawl is which player gets to get to their engine first, right? Um, and a lot of that depends on, you know, your mana coming into play and being usable right away. So if you have a whole deck full of tap lands, you know, one or two are okay, like the MDFCs we have in here. Those are okay because they have dual value, right? But, you know, if you have, you know, that would be 
probably six plus lands that are all dual tap lands. If you have your whole mana base full of dual tap lands, it's going to slow you down. And slowing you down is a bigger detriment than the value you gain from like double gaining one life or double scrying one. Although double scrying one is great, you know, and I, I it was so it's such good value that I almost put them in. But I just think having uh, faster mana is more important. We have enough value from everything else we're doing. So my philosophy was let's just have our mana. We're already in three colors, which is kind of awkward to fix already. So let's just make our mana smooth and make the deck good and not like try to get cheeky with like, let's gain two life, right? Or let's scry two, right? We already have effects that get to, you know, allow us to scry four and stuff like that. Um, in case you were wondering why those lands are not in the deck. So, if this is your first time on the channel, thanks for watching. If you haven't already, subscribe. If uh, this was a viewer requested deck, so if you're interested in, you know, having me play a deck that you'd like me to play, join the Discord. It's in the description. There's a channel for requesting decks. Go ahead and request it there. Otherwise, let's get into the games. I'm not sure which Q uh, Yarok is in. I. I it used to be in Hell Q, but I haven't. I don't play against it that much, and you know I play a lot of Historic Brawl. I come across it every once in a while. It's always very powerful when I come across it. Uh, Sauron, that's a that's a good deck. Hopefully, we can just get enough value going before Sauron comes down. We get to go first, which is always nice. Um. A lot of tap lands here. Provisioner is nice. This is also something we can double with Yarok. Um, ways to gain more mana. Tribute to, I mean, this is a good hand. I would really like to have, like, <laughs> one more land so Fable Passage could come down untapped. Hmm. They're a slow deck, too, though, so we'll see. I think we'll keep. We get to go first, so we're technically slightly faster than them. So what do we do first? Uh, I think green is by far the most important color, so let's just get rid of, uh, or, or get this one down. Uh, and and the, the Mammoth is not, like, incredibly good in this deck. It, it's nice, but it's not incredibly good. That's a great card. It's just a little bit awkward this early in the game. Um, yeah, let's just keep getting our... Ooh, that can enter untapped. Do we have anything to do with that, though? No. I should have done that the other way around. Can I undo that? Z. No. Um, yeah, well, alright. Let's not take the three life. I forgot that the mythic versions of these MDFCs can come into play untapped. So I should have done Fable Passage this turn, just in case we didn't draw an untapped land next turn. Now we still could draw an untapped land and then we're fine. Um, but we really want to get down one of these two. If we draw another land, definitely this guy, so we can uh Get the double trigger with Fable Passage. Roxa, okay. Um. What is this? If power three or greater, draw a card. Otherwise, I mean, our whole hand is all that. This is technically a better version of this, so maybe we can get rid of. This guy for now. Since we kind of have like two copies. Both of them on the battlefield would be nuts. Okay, we did get an untapped land. Cool. So it all worked out. <laughs> so we need to get a blue source. So let's go get the dual uh, blue black, I guess. I would love to get this, but it comes into play tap. So we really want to grab this guy and have it come into play untapped. And then they probably have a removal spell, but YOLO. If they don't have a removal spell, then we're happy. Okay, cool. That's good for them. So I always say this with this card. It says shuffled into your library, the, the power nine card, but it really puts it in your top 10. So we got to expect whatever power nine they just shuffled in their deck to be in their top 10 cards. Um, I've played against this card enough to know that these, you know, these alchemy cards kind of lie to you. Um, okay, so first, treasure. 
another treasure. Do we have double color or anything? Yeah, double green. So we need another green source. If we had Yarok down, we would have made four treasures there. Just keep that in mind. If we had Tatiova down, we would have drawn a bunch of cards. Great Henge is pretty nice. We could play Yarok. He might kill it, though. They didn't kill Tireless Provisioner. They played a creature or two, so they probably aren't going to board wipe. Hmm. Great Henge. Let's get this down. It makes Great Henge even cheaper. Now our game plan's online. Uh, I will let them kill this if they want. They don't want to. Okay. Yogmoth. Modern staple. Let's give it a read. Pay one life, sacrifice another creature. Put a negative one, negative one counter on up to one target creature and draw a card. This card a card proliferate. So they're gonna do that. And then... Oh, see see what, I, what I tell you? The power nine is in their top ten. Every time. Don't believe these alchemy cards, man. They, they are so engineered to be... Uh, you know, they engineer the fun into them, right? Because if it really shuffled it into your 100 card deck, you'd never see it. So, you know... Nice try, Wizards, but we figured it out. We figured it out. Man, alchemy cards just... Every day... Every day pissing me off. Okay. Treasure. See, we got a double trigger because of uh, Tileless Provisioner. Um, what's the best... We should have maybe played this first. Yeah, that probably would have been smarter. That's okay. It's okay. We can still do this and do this. This is not a human. Would you like to block? Nope. This has lifelink too, which is nice. They're one land away from Sauron. Knowing how I build Sauron, they, they're eventually going to run into, uh, you know, draw removal and stuff. Okay, that's not the worst. They're going to negative four here. And so we get to choose. They have to sack their Yawgmoth. What? What? I think drawing cards... Yeah, so let's get rid of you and you. That's a pretty desperate play from them. They get to draw a card, but they're tapped out. So we can kill their Liliana. Ooh. You don't say. Okay. Double trigger. So we're going to draw four cards here and gain four life. Pretty nice. And we can get something back from the graveyard. Two things back from the graveyard. Um, do we need untapped? I mean, yeah, we probably should, right? Because we're gaining all this life. So, you... Gain two more life. So it basically comes into play and we didn't even lose any life. We can destroy their mox jet. Oh, they didn't. Oh, I, I didn't even think about that. They could have played their commander and they chose not to. They chose to play Liliana instead. So we could kill Liliana and destroy their mox jet. I mean, that's decent. Is there anything we want to get back that we could play? Not necessarily. All right, let's attack first. Kill you. No, defeat. This doesn't really work in, in the way that I would like, because if we blow up their Mox Jet, they get to go get a land, and it's any land. So let's not give them any land they want. If Sauron comes down next turn, what's the best thing? What's the best thing to have going?
This will give us double green. I think just drawing more cards, right? We get to draw eight here. Is that if I understand that correctly? <laughs> I think this will give us the best uh, look at what we want to do. Butcher's bless blessing. It's a we get to draw six. All right, our deck's doing the thing. That's nice against them, Cavernous Souls. Okay. Um, all right. We can scry four. We're on zero timeout, so we got to think quick. I think uh, making them sweep is what we want to do. So that their commander doesn't come down. We don't need this land... We don't need this land. Protection would be nice. Mole Drifter. Oh, they just scoop. Cool. <laughs> so my plan was, you know, pick a couple more cards. But uh, if if their commander comes down, we can shield rid them. Which does it say? Is sacrifice a non-token creature, right? So. This is a tricky card if you ever played against it. So the ward, you know, basically makes it so we can't interact with it. But we can make them sacrifice it with Shieldred's ability. So Sauron, you know, let's assume they play Sauron next turn. When we cast Shieldred, they'll make a army token. Because whenever we cast a spell, they create an army. Um, usually that makes it really hard to kill with edict effects like Shieldred's. But Shieldred says sacrifice a non-token creature. So they could only sacrifice their Sauron, and they would be left with their 1-1 army, then we swing in and we do a bunch of other gross stuff. That was my plan. Uh, Treacherous Blessing, I forgot to talk about it in the intro, but this is normally not a card you want to play unless you're in a specific deck because of the downside of whenever we cast a spell, we lose one life, but we gain a bunch of life in this deck, like with Tatiova and Yarok. So this, this comes down, it's three mana, draw six. With Yorok on the battlefield. I mean, it's already good. Three mana draw three without Yorok. But with Yorok, it's a three mana draw six. Pretty nuts. Um, so yeah. Good game. Like I said, whoever gets to their engine first usually wins an historic brawl. Unless the opponent has some kind of overwhelming board wipe reset kind of effect. Um, and those typically only are in white. You know? I mean, there are board wipes obviously in red and black. And there's mass bounce effects in blue, but those don't like completely reset the board. They don't get get rid of everything. They don't get rid of your enchantments and artifacts and things like that. But if you're playing against a white player, especially if they're in a control shell or something, they have farewell and our revelation and things like that. And those really do reset the game. So you got to be wary of those effects. Um, but other than those types of decks, usually it's whoever gets to their engine first that is is the person that wins. Especially if that person gets to go first, right? It, it can be as simple as who went first, and usually because they went first, they got to get to their engine first, right? Let's see who we get next. Uh, I feel like I made a deck around this guy, but I can't remember. Audric. At the beginning of each combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. If a creature you control has first strike, the same is true. Oh, okay. So this, this is like an abilities deck and it's like a mono white combat matters deck or, or like abilities matter deck. Interesting. At the beginning of combat, creatures you control gain first strike until end of turn. So it's only until their, the end of their turn, which is good. It's not permanent. Uh, this is nice against them. We have all our colors. A little bit slow, though. So hopefully we draw some stuff. We get to go first, though, so... We have one turn of fumbling. Is there anything that comes into play... This, right now, comes into play tap no matter what. So let's get that down. And we can play this, then this, then this. Hey. 
Okay. We still don't have a turn to play. So this has flying and lifelink, right? They're going to have a bunch of creatures with abilities so they can give all their creatures those abilities. We'll do it like this. Let's put a stop just so they maybe think that we have a counter spell. So they just let them sweat for a minute. Resolves. What does this do? Enters the battlefield and we search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Shuffle. Put it that card on top. Okay. Kind of a... I mean, it's like an okay effect, but... That's like a popper card more than a historic brawl card. <laughs> putting, putting your lands on top versus in your hand or on the battlefield is uh is pretty pretty meh okay we we actually have a play so we can get you down get you down pass the turn we don't have double black yet but we can fable passage for our basic um swamp and kill something if we really want they don't want to attack with this sure Life link and what? Any of combat your turn? Target. Oh, okay. It gets plus two and gains vigilance. I see. I was like, why is this untapped? Okay. All right. Well, um, activate ability. We can kill something if we want. Is it better just to kill their commander, though? That's what I'm thinking. Like, should I hold this for their commander? We can Guardian Project, which is pretty good value over time. I think this is a good time to drop this. We're not under any real pressure. Now we have two effects that really uh, work well with Yarok. So if they play their commander this turn, we're still at a good healthy life total. Cavern of Souls, that's fine. We don't I don't think we have any counters in this deck. Maybe one, but we're not really based around that. Okay, kite sail would be pretty good once we get Yarok down. Let's play you. They don't have a great attack right now. I mean, they're, they're hitting me for three, but... I could just kill their commander. Does this have reach? No. I think we just Yarok. And that way... We might go down a little bit on life. We're not going to die next turn. Um... We could gain some life, which is pretty good. We could create a treasure, which is also good. Let's do the treasure and gain the life. Because again, it's double because of Yarok, and we draw two because of Guardian Project. And now we have some land, which is great. So yeah, they're going to swing in next turn. Everything will have flying and, and lifelink, which is, you know, a bummer, but not the end of the world. Yeah. Fair enough. Um, we don't have anything right now that gets rid of enchantments. So we'll put it back in the command zone. So everything will gain flying and lifelink. And first strike. <laughs> Which is fine. We don't have anything to block with anyway. Let's not take any more life. Bloodstained Mire makes us lose a life. I wanted to Yarok into Ravenous Chupacabra, but I might just have to fire this off and then Kite Sail our last couple cards.
We could get rid of their flyer too so they can't fly. Maybe I should start with this. We have we still have double black. We'll gain the life. Okay. We can blow up their bat, so nothing would have flying. Or we could just blow up their commander. But again, we could blow up their commander, then they could just replay it, and then they get the same ability, right? One, two, three, four, five. So this would be a three, three. Yeah, I think we just gotta do it. I wanted, I wanted more value out of this, but it is what it is. Get a better blocker. Draw a card. No attacks. Okay, so now they gotta draw some creature with a good ability. Which, I mean, their whole deck is full of, okay? Vigilance. It's not the worst. They attack all. Do they have double strike? No, so 4, 7, 11. So we wouldn't die. We wouldn't die. <laughs> we wouldn't die. Hmm. Or do we just kill some of their stuff? This has trample. So no matter what, some of our stuff is going to die. I think we do it like that. This has no ability of its own, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, this has first strike. Okay, well. Whoops. Um, Yarok will help us gain life. Because it has lifelink. I guess we draw a card. I think we're still dead. Draw two. Yeah, I think we're still dead. We will gain some life from Yarok. What are they going to give the buff to? The gnome again? I would give it to the first striker. Well, I guess they're all first strikers, right? Okay. We can block all of this damage and then take... Seven, nine. Then we could block this damage because they don't have trample and take four. This has death touch, so it'll get rid of that. They'll get their card back, but it's our only choice. Wait. They had trample? I'm so confused. Oh, I guess they did have trample? Okay, I don't know. Whatever. I don't think there was a way we could have blocked to stop that. I think we could have won that game if we played a little bit better, but 
It's okay. Uh, I think I got greedy and tried to hold the chupacabra a little too long, and um, you know, I wanted the I wanted the double effect. You know, what can I say? We get to go first. Contorius Cond, a really good planeswalker. This doesn't affect planeswalkers. Boot Swarm's nice. Okay. Um, this comes into play tap no matter what right now. Get that out of the way first. Okay. D um, I think we... It'd be nice to get the Triome with this, but I think we just save this. We already have all our colors anyway. So blue, green, this will be on black. And we'll get down the boots. Try to curve out. Maybe we can save this for Scoot Swarm. Alright. We'll give them a target if they want to get rid of something. They obviously have some kind of interaction. Better they use it on our Scoot Swarm than our Commander. Yep. That's fine. We were far away from six lands anyway. And they could have used this on the Swiftfoot Boots, so that's good that we uh, got that out of their hand. This can come into play untapped, but is there a point? I think we just, since we're under no pressure, let's just go get the Triome and fix our mana. I mean, it's already fixed, but now we have double of everything, right? So, Seagate Restoration and, and Chupacabra and stuff like that is all online. I mean, we need one more blue, but you get what I'm saying. We're getting closer to being able to cast all our spells. Looks like they might be just playing Boros Control with Cond because they're not playing anything. Witness. We can get Scoot Swarm back. Is that that good right now? Hmm. No, I don't think that's what we're looking for right now. We need something a little bit better than that. We could use this to scry again if we want. Okay. Anyone who harms Make a my samurai. Must contend with me. It's fine. Let your we could also use this on Chupacabra to clean up their board for an attack. Our enemies. I mean, sure. Do they have like a one damage spell? Is that what they're going for? We'll make their spell not resolve. Hmm. 
Nope. That's a good one. Obviously, we'll hold on to, to that guy. Maybe we just play Yarok. Manatide? Reprieve. Uh, hand is fine. But yeah, they are playing Boros Control. <clears throat> Could be a tough matchup. I mean, we'll have to wait for the right window to resolve this, and then we can do some damage. Con, yep, make more tokens. But again, bouncing the tokens means that, you know, they just go away permanently. So it's essentially like removal. It does put back these in their their hand, but um, and and this. Although I, I guess we control this, right? So we've got the edge in this fight. Okay, swords. Okay. Never mind, we will bounce that back through the hand eventually. Yep. Okay. Give a part. Yeah, just a bunch of bunch of good stuff. Well, I mean we can do this, blow up their thing, and then put it with the boots, and then they're not really able to target it. So if we do this, yeah, they can't, they can't negative two, um, because it's hexproof, so they can't get it with the wanderer. That makes things a little awkward for them. They could replay Cond. Guards, to me. They have a land, which I'm assuming they do. Yeah. Oh, there you go. They could have done that and then exiled it with the Emperor. And still played Khan. I think that would have been a better line, but they're still they're still doing a lot of good stuff. So synthesizer, but that's going to go away this turn. So I'm not really sure why they did that. <laughs> I think actually all of these go away, don't they? Ah, I see. Okay. Gotcha. Hey. I think we need to get to Cyclonic Rift. Try to draw a land. We do. We don't need to take damage. Let's just get our stuff down.
Pretty good planeswalker. Let's go big. Taking six, taking seven. Remember your training. Taking eight. <laughs> okay. So this is not an instant. Well, it definitely is the only option we have, so. They can't play everything, which means they're going to have to discard some stuff. And if we draw a land next turn, we can Cyclonic Rift them at instant speed. That's their whole turn. Minus two, I'm assuming, or minus three. Get lost. They can destroy my Confounding Conundrum. Yeah, they can't target the Thassa, although you're welcome to try. Make two maps. Why again? Why are you playing this? You can't play this spell. You have no. Ma <laughs> I don't understand. You you only have one turn to play this. Read the card. You have to play it this turn. You're just exiling your own stuff. Oh, man, we didn't get the land. Technically, this is a land, though. I wonder if they have removal for Yarok. W let's find out. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll crack a map token, because why not? Not really what we want right now. We don't want to balance it, because we'll lose the counter and Yarok has lifelink so if they can't get rid of it then uh, it might be our way back into this game yeah because they can't kill it with Chandra now because its toughness is too high okay I see they're just gonna make a bunch of creatures you can attack if you want I welcome it Okay. Maybe they have a spell that kills this if I block. Because it'll reduce its toughness down to three. So no blocks then. Down to six. One, one. They now have enough power to block my Yarok if they want. Go down. Yep. Okay. Well, we can. Cyclonic Riftum at instant speed, and I think that's our only shot back in this game. So what? Next turn they're going to attack all. We can make two Yaroks and have seven power worth of lifelink. But did they already get rid of Chandra? Did Chandra go away? No, it's right there. They could just kill that because it would have five toughness. Yeah, I think our they say good game. Always a classy move. Commit zero. Resolve. So if we block with Yarok, even if they have a way to kill it, we'll survive. The goal is to have them. 
a, like do everything here like play all their stuff out and then we cyclonic rift them yep resolve 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 do damage to my face come on play more stuff destroy evil Resolve. Is that from exile too? Yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. So they'd still have enough to play con. They can they play this from exile? Yes, they can. Take action. I think I missed my opportunity to cyclonic rift because now they can just play stone rain from exile and get the trigger. And I'll just do it. For funsies. I'm still gonna die, but yeah, cool. They they had an answer. <laughs> I'm not gonna give them a good game. I don't I don't like giving good games to people who are little bitches, but yeah. Um could have played better, could have played better. I think I missed my opportunity to Cyclonic Rift. There was a window there where I could have done it, and uh I missed the opportunity. Sorry, my, my phone, people keep texting me and it's distracting me, but that's no excuse. <clears throat> Aragorn. Five, or four color good stuff. try to keep a good hand this time so they're in green so they're probably this is probably a good card against them to stop them from uh, ramping which they're gonna want to do I like this hand it has a lot of good value in it so I think we're gonna keep even though we go second all our fetches too well not all of them but a lot of them um, hmm. Let's just go get the Triome. Let's not mess around with trying to get this into play tapped. Let's just get the best land in our deck down on turn one. Sentinel is a little annoying, but we don't have a ton of non-creature stuff in our deck. It's mostly creatures. We need double colors. Yeah, we need triple green. So let's go get a green blue or green black so that we eventually get Hagger Mauling online. And I guess we'll just put down Wall of Runes. I guess we could have had that come into play tapped. I was thinking maybe do Confounding Conundrum, but... Changed my mind. Um, this could be good against them, so I think I'm going to keep it. We don't have double blue right now, but we can get double blue. Maybe they have lightning bolt. I don't really care. <laughs> okay, or not. Now we have double blue and triple green. What's better? This? I think so. Auto pay. Draw a card. Turns off any ramp they want to do. That's a great card. Aragorn. Okay. 
we can just tagger mauling their Aragorn. I mean, that's definitely a play. We'd miss a land drop if we did that, though. Hello. Um, we could do this and bounce their Aragorn. And then kill it. But we'd still miss a land drop. We did this. We get a land. It comes into play tapped. We really don't want them to get the value off Aragorn. Am I going to miss a land? I guess we can Crux of Fate, huh? Yeah. Yep, I think that's what we do. And we can River's Rebuke. So we got plays lined up. Rari's Wake. That's a pretty good one. We can we can straight up kill their Esper Sentinel, which I think is definitely a worthy trade. Tangle. Yep, wait, there's a land. And then let's ramp to River's Rebuke. These are two creatures I'm not worried about killing with Crux of Fate. But hopefully what they do here is they just play out their hand because they have a bunch of stuff with Morari's Wake. And then we can just sweep their whole board. They still have six mana. Blaine, yeah. So, this is what we wanted them to do. Okay. Anything that's a dragon here? No. Perfect. Okay. Well... They still have Morari's Wake, so it's not like completely over, but, uh, you know, that was a pretty good turn. Next turn we can Rivers Rebuke them. We are getting low on life. Toski. I don't know, how come I never get turns like this when I play Aragorn? Oh. They say good game. They do they really feel that way? Okay. Now do I Rivers Rebuke or do I Casualties of War? One artifact. Is there is there an artifact in here? No. Artifact creature, enchantment, land, planeswalker. I could blow this up. And then I could Rivers Rebuke them next turn. Am I just going to die on the backswing though? Seven. Nine. Yeah, they have perfect lethal. Okay. Okay. Yep, yep, so you got four mana. You can't play your commander, right? Okay. And 
and some lands would be pretty cool. We could do this and get back River's Rebuke, which would just be really funny. Or Crux of Fate. We really need to gain some life, too. We, and we really need to get rid of this. Okay, so I think we, this turn, casualties, land, enchantment, creature, creature, enchantment. What would be the best? Do they only have one blue? Yeah, they do. Get rid of their blue source. Can't play their commander again. That's fine. Doesn't change anything. <laughs> Toski. Luminarch. Okay. Finally, land. Um, what's the best play here? I mean, we could do. I think we just get Yarok down and Urban Utopia. They still don't have a blue source for their commander. We can draw two here. We'll just select the swamp. We need some cards anyway. And then we can get back two cards with Golgari. Fine broker. This would have been nice. <laughs> a little earlier, but that's okay. Dang, they have so many creatures. You like to attack. Perfect. I would love to gain some life. Okay. Anything here that's an enchantment? Or artifact? No. Alright. Um, they still don't have a blue source for their commander. This can help us gain life, too. So I think this is the play. Get two cards back from our graveyard. Oh, it's a permanent card. Oops. Well. This is still a good blocker. And this is still a good card. So, not the worst. Can bounce something. <laughs> they just give up. <laughs> okay. Uh, I don't know. I think they uh, they just realize that they they're never gonna or they're they're not likely to just draw another blue source. And uh, I don't know which one we would have bounced, but maybe this one. I'm not sure. But um. I think they could they could feel our life gain coming back. We had uh you know some big creatures down there not going to be able to attack through. They can't play their commander again because they don't have a blue source. So yeah. Casualties of war. Who knew? Good card. We'll do one more. Oh no, I think the deck's doing pretty well. I, uh, my decision making is a little off, but the deck's doing well. <laughs> Which is, you know, par for the course for my videos. It's a yo uh, I tried to make a couple different versions of this deck and I could never get it to go. So let's see... Uh, but I'm always down for Rakdos. I mean, that's my favorite guild. So we'll, we'll see if uh, the opponent's got a sick brew up their sleeve. Other than that, I mean, not much more you could ask for. I mean, it's a pretty good hand. Removal, sick planeswalker that doubles all our forests. Card that draws us more cards, essentially. Um, I guess we start with you so that this is turned on and this... We'll need another green source, but I think Desprout can get us there. Actually, Arcane Signet will get us there. We'll do it like this, and this. 
Now we have all the double colors we need. As long as this comes down as a green. Yoa, yeah. I think... Um, I don't know how their deck runs, but I think the right play here is just to blow it up. And uh, ramp, right? Then we can get Nissa down. We'll go get a forest so that Nissa can double that forest. And now we're at five mana and they're at two. Mindstone, yep. Draw a card and lose a life, sure. Okay. Um, not really worried about taking the one here. Through this land, we are all connected. We had uh, we had a really good card on top. Uh, this is also a forest, so yeah, let's let's get our best land and let's plus, but not they're in, they're in black, so I don't really want to put our I don't want to animate our lands and turn them into creatures. They ha probably have a lot of removal spells, so let's protect our lands. Once we get a ton of lands, I don't mind animating them, but right now I don't want to have them blown up. And again, we already plused one, so if they want to attack it for one, it's like, it doesn't really change anything. Oh, they attacked my face. Okay. Um, we'll just take three damage, I guess. You're not going to attack Nyssa, huh? Well... Goot Swarm's pretty nice. But now we have double Radagast. We could have double Nyssa too. Oh, do we do double Nyssa? No. That's crazy talk. <laughs> Maybe on a better board. But, uh... Not this one. Does that work with this? I do that. That's so risky. Rise, my it does friend. work. We can create a copy. Okay. I, I don't know what that did, but that was that didn't seem to do anything. What? Enters the battlefield, choose a creature, enchanted creature is a copy of the chosen creature. Oh, okay, I misread that card, my bad. Sacrifice a creature or planeswalker. Um sure. Okay, they're doing their thing. We're almost at Nissa's ultimate though, so. We just sacrifice the land and let them attack Nyssa. They chose this one. We can still play Yarok next turn. Yeah, I think the right play is just to do this and try to get to Nyssa's ultimate. Deck's doing the thing. Let's go get a 
Oh, this is not a fetch. We pay two life. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, I think so. It didn't have any targeted removal that whole turn, so it makes me feel better about animating my land. Is This gains us life, so I think we gotta get that down. This is three. That would mean this would cost four. But yeah, we could do that. Yep, that gains us life. Rex Sage, huh? This also gains us life. Be wary of the ground you walk on. We could do this and protect it, right? Come back as a land. Yeah. Cool. I like that. Now we have Nissa's uh, ultimate online, so they they really got to do something about that. Okay. Fair enough. It's essentially like a Sacrifice Matters deck. Okay, and then they attack Nyssa. It's a good turn. They got rid of our board and they're keeping the ultimate off. Of peace. And then they get to do five damage to us. But I mean, we got, we got some stuff up our sleeve. Okay, so you are gaining some life. You we could have done that in the other order and gained a slightly more life, but that's okay. You. Card, gain a life. Pass. Okay, draw some cards. See what they got. We have a protection spell and a way to balance something if they play something really broken. Okay, this is like a curse that flips around. The backside's a curse. Take three damage. We're not worried about our life total right this second. Oh, this is funny. We can make them discard their whole hand. Gain two. Burglar rat. Discard your hand. Gain two life. <laughs> it was two lands, but still. Um... Yeah, I think we should just plus the... Forest here. The land shall conquer you. Next. 
There's nothing I really want to attack with, so no attacks. End turn. We get a landfall trigger and protect our land. Create a treasure. Oh, now it's all doubled, so we create two treasures. We could create food too to um, gain more life, but I think we're okay. And then we draw two cards. Nice. And they have one card in hand. And we have Nissa's ultimate. <laughs> so pick your poison opponent. I doubt you have a card in Rakdos that does everything you need to this turn. Oh, they had the Planeswalker removal. That's okay. That's too bad. Um, we can just bounce this so that they uh, the trigger fizzles. Gain two life. Yep. Bye, Nissa. That would have been sick with Tatiova. Nissa's ability, but it's okay. Resolve. Yeah, we'll just take three damage. How about that? Bye. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I really wanted this card to be good, Zioa, but um, it's just there's too many hoops to jump through to make it good, unfortunately. I think there's maybe like a 60 card build where it would be good. I, I could see that. Maybe in standard or or uh, some other format. But in Historic Brawl, it's uh, you need a little bit. If you're going to go the burn route, you need a, a little bit more firepower. But maybe, I don't know, maybe there's a strategy. I just haven't thought of it yet. Anyway, let's crack a pack. Let's see. Anything good? Surveil land? Hell yeah. Nice. Okay. This is another land that would be good in Yarok because you'd get double surveil triggers, but I didn't include them because I didn't... Even though surveil was a good mechanic, just like scrying and, and gaining life technically, uh, I this isn't like... If this was a, a graveyard-centric deck, then this would be really good, right? Because it'd be putting cards in our graveyard. Um, it's already, in Yark, it's just okay because it's kind of like scrying where you get to manipulate the top card of your deck. Um, and that's, you know, playing land and having two surveil triggers is definitely good, but they come into play tapped. Now these are fetchable, so they are a little bit better than the scry lands. So if you really wanted some landfall, um, synergy with Yarok, I would say this is the only tap land I would put in the deck just because they're fetchable. But, um, other than that, uh... I wouldn't put any of them in them, at least in Historic Brawl. In Commander, go nuts. But in Historic Brawl, uh, you don't want t too many tap lands. Um, you, you're, the speed at which your deck runs is very important. Alright, deck review. So, I think we got to see Yarok do the thing. Um, again, I built this deck uh, without a, a bunch of removal in it or board wipes. There are a couple of those pieces, and you know, obviously we got to see Casualties of War pop off and and crux of fate and some of the mass bounce spells like river's rebuke and cyclonic rift but i think besides those four um there's not a whole lot of removal except for like a, a couple little target removal pieces like assassin's trophy and hagger mauling um but there isn't like 20 removal spells in here right it's mainly creatures that have effects that synergize with yarok's ability um and that's probably the most fun way to play the deck if you're looking to get a little bit more wins with the deck i would recommend putting in some of the better removal you are in sultai so you have a lot of options there's a ton of golgari type um, effects like assassin's trophy um, that i would include you know uh, because the golgari removal spells are really really good um, one of the ones i really like is binding of the old gods that actually does work with yarok because assassin's trophy is a sorcery or i'm sorry an instant so you're not getting a double effect but with Binding of the Old Gods, you act, since it's a permanent, you actually do get double destroy target on land permanent. So I think this is an auto include in the deck if you need to include more removal. And then you got like Death Sprout and some other stuff. Um, you know, unfortunately, the way it really works in Historic Brawl is, you know, like I said, you, you, you want to get to your engine first, but sometimes in order to get to the, your engine first, you have to remove the other player's engine because they, you know, their deck's popping off a little bit faster than yours. Um, so removal is an, un, you know, a necessary evil in Historic Brawl. 
if you want to get more wins. But if you're looking to just have fun and try to pop off with Yarok's ability, I think this is a really good starting place. It has a ton of, you know, creatures and different kinds of permanents and stuff that all double, you know, double up with Yarok. So um, I had a lot of fun playing it. Soul Tide is a really fun color combination. It has kind of a little bit of everything that Magic the Gathering has to offer, you know, with like green with creatures and creature synergies. And then you have blue so you can manipulate the game and then black and, you know, you can remove stuff or bring stuff back from your graveyard. It kind of has a little bit of everything. I don't think I'd change the mana base again unless you want to add in those surveil lands. I think those are the only ones that I would include just because they're fetchable with the with the uh, fetch lands, right? Other than that, uh, cool deck. So thanks for watching. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe. If you haven't joined the Discord and you're interested in doing that to not only request a deck but just chat with other people from the channel, uh, go ahead and join the Discord. It's in the description. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Have a good one. I'll see you in the next one later.